bongos. Created in the late 19th century for Latin American bands to be used in many of their popular music styles. Donkey Kong. He was in Donkey Kong Hockey. But what if these two ideas were combined to make... Huh. Donkey Kong, one of Nintendo's oldest and most recognizable characters. After his first few outings in arcades, they didn't really know what to do with him. That was until the legendary game developer Rare came to revive the character with some of the greatest 2D platformers ever made. And after years of success during the Super Nintendo and N64 days, Rare was ready to move on to the next generation with a new Donkey Kong racing game in the works. But that was until they got bought by Microsoft, leaving Nintendo to once again try and figure out what the heck to do with this thing. We got tons of random stuff from the character during this time, but my personal favorite has to be the Donkey Kong Bongos. Now you would think that this accessory about a specific character from a specific series with only one specific action you can really do with them would probably mean that this accessory probably didn't get much support, but no. In Japan there were four games made for the accessory and three of them got localized for the rest of the world with one of them being a full-fledged platformer developed by Nintendo themselves, with the first game released being... So starting off we have the main menu, and it seems like there's quite a lot to do here, but a majority of the options are just slight variations of the normal mode, so not really much to say about those. So this game is very similar to games like Rock Band or Guitar Hero, but the twist is that there is a monkey. So to my surprise, this game actually features a lot of actual non-Donkey Kong music, which I will not be playing out of fear of what the owners of Rock Lobster will do to me. And yeah, it's just really weird to see Donkey Kong jamming out to We Will Rock You, it just doesn't click with my brain for some reason. This game also features some Nintendo music remixes like the Legend of Zelda theme, the Mario Bros theme, the Kirby Right Back Atcha theme song, and the Pokemon theme song song is even here too. And as for the gameplay goes, it's just hitting the right part of the bongo or clapping at the right time. And this isn't a bad thing, but there's just not much to say. It's fun, but it's just really simple and easy to get the hang of. But it's very clear that this game was not intended to be played by yourself, it's a party game. These games are all about passing the bongos around and just having a good time, and I can appreciate that. You do get coins for clearing songs, which can be used to buy things in the shop. You can buy things like mini games, which aren't really that great, but I won't complain that they're here. You can also buy different sounds for your bongos. The ones I got sound like this. Warning. Before we move on, I need to give a fair warning to any of you under the age of 13 because things are about to get intense. The ESRB rating for Donkey Konga 2 is T for teens, so who knows what terrible things we may see ahead. So just like the last game, the menu is full of different ways to play the normal mode, and as for the normal mode, it is almost identical to the first game except we have a new lineup of songs. And while overall I do like this lineup more, it does suck that there aren't really any Nintendo songs like there were in the last game. The minigames return in this one, but there are only two and you just have them unlocked right off the bat and they're fun I guess. There's also the free play mode. How fun? Just like the first one, this one is a fun party game, but not much more. Overall, both of these games aren't anything too crazy, but I still think that they have some charm to them and seeing Donkey Kong play the bongos to losing my religion will always make these games worth it in my book. So after making two rhythm games to use with your DK bongos, Nintendo made the obvious choice to make a game that perfectly fits the bongos control scheme. A 2D platformer. In my opinion, this is one of the most interesting Nintendo games, as it's not like they just threw this to some random developer. Nintendo wanted to make this game, and you can really tell. While not bad, you can tell that the Donkey Kong games were put together pretty quickly. I mean, the sequel came out only eight months after the first one. But Jungle Beat is just a really well put together platformer, and you can tell that they actually took time to make sure everything felt good. You would think that a game like this would just be to play it once and then throw it away, but no, this game is really good. And I even think that the bongos make this a more enjoyable game. The levels are designed very well around this control scheme, and I think it makes the game all the more fun. And it's not like this game is a one trick pony either. While the bongo control scheme makes the game stand out more, this game is still a solid 2D platformer without even factoring that in. There are a bunch of different gimmicks within the levels that help them stand out, and on top of this, the game also has a score attack element to it as well, and as a fan of Sonic games, I very much enjoy this. You increase your score by picking up bananas, but you can perform combos to get score multipliers to raise your score even higher, and I love this. 
The score aspect gives these levels tons of replayability to try and go for all of the gold medals and improve upon your last playthrough. There are also bosses at the end of each stage, and while I'm not a huge fan of the bosses where you're just dodging and punching, I do enjoy most of the other ones as they usually have fun ways to take them out. Your health is also tied to your score, which may make the game seem easier, but if you're actually going for high scores, it gives you a good incentive to try and not get hit. Okay, I'm starting to get very weirded out on how good this game made for the DK Bongos is. Who made this? Oh, that's right. The team that made Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the DK Bongos would go on to make one of the greatest games of all time. In all honesty, this actually makes quite a bit of sense. Going from the weird control scheme of the DK Bongos for this game to the slightly less weird control scheme for the Wii probably helped out a lot and gave them a feel for how to make fun games with strange control schemes. There are even certain levels in the game that really reminded me of Galaxy and that was really cool to see. Donkey Kong Jungle Bee ended up being a very pleasant surprise for me, and I really enjoyed it. And with this game coming out during a time when good DK platformers just weren't really coming out anymore, I'm sure that this game was very appreciated. In my opinion, I would say that this game even holds up with Returns and Tropical Freeze, but for very different reasons. And the fact that this game is basically the predecessor to Mario Galaxy makes it even more interesting to me. Well, that's all of the games released for the DK Bongo's accessory, but I somehow feel like I'm missing something. Like a member of the family got lost in the airport. On March 17th of 2005, the game Donkey Konga 3 was released to the Japanese public, but never made it to foreign grounds. Some say that pirates intercepted the shipments. Some say that the public wasn't ready for this game and they hid it out of fear. And some people say that no one cared about Donkey Konga. But perhaps we will never know why this game was kept from us. Now as for the game itself, it looks a lot like Donkey Konga 2, but the main difference is that I can't have it. So please Nintendo, if you have a heart, localize Donkey Konga 3. After playing most of the games released for the DK Bongos, I can say that while it was a strange time for Donkey Kong, it was a fun time. The Donkey Konga games, while not anything too deep, are still fun party games that are always fun to pull out and play with some friends. And Donkey Kong Jungle Beat was an excellent experience that really surprised me. I thought that the game would have just been a very mediocre platformer, except you have bongos. But instead, the game offered an amazing experience that actually felt heightened by the bongos being there. And the fact that this game pretty much led to the creation of Mario Galaxy makes it even more interesting than it already was. What I originally thought was just going to be some throwaway accessory ended up providing some really fun experiences that I might even go back to. Now localize Donkey Konga 3.